way from the Philippines. I know he's in the building, but we do want to recognize him and his lovely wife and then all of our church family from the Philippines. And then certainly uh, we want to recognize Bishop Kwasi Makunu and his lovely wife, Sister Pat. Would you put your hands together? Would you just make them feel loved even though they're not here? We do want to give them a big virtual hug. They are all the way from Durban, South Africa. And then, of course, Pastor Abraham and his lovely wife, all the way from Bangalore, India. Amen. Amen. And then Pastor Ru Esther and her lovely family. And, of course, we want to be praying for her as they are going through their time of bereavement. But would you put your hands together and just show our Bangalore, India family some love. We do love you, our international family. And we ask, as you're watching virtually, would you mind just sharing on your social media platforms? Would you like it, love it, care about it, share it, put it in your story so that others might hear the gospel of peace? How many know that people need to hear what we have in this building on tonight? And so we don't want to keep folks from hearing that just by simply clicking a button. It's just really easy to do. I do have to recognize our leaders on tonight. Can you put your hands together for our bishops on tonight? Bishop Ronnie Whittier, we love you, Bishop, and his lovely wife. I saw her just a few minutes ago, and then our newly elected Bishop Hamilton is here on the platform. God bless you, Bishop Hamilton, and First Lady Hamilton, God bless you. And then, of course, to our assistant presiding prelate, um, I like to call him my cousin because we got the same last name, if that's all right. But that is our great Bishop Terrence Coleman and First Lady Coleman. We love y'all. We do. And then, of course, to my pastor, Apostle Larry J. Baylor, our presiding bishop. I know you don't like it, but stand to your feet because he's our visionary. And although he's not here, we still got to give honor where it's due because none of this would be possible without his leadership, without his vision, and without him following the lead of the living God. So we do honor you, Bishop, on tonight, and we're praying for you. We believe that you are healed in the name of Jesus, along with Cameron. We love y'all. And, of course, to Lady Baylor. We love you, Lady Baylor. We love you, and it's just not the same when we don't have our leaders in the building, but we want you to feel and know that the people of God love you on tonight. And of course, to all the saints, the pastors, the teachers, the prophets, whatever your position is, we love y'all, and we appreciate you for hanging with us on tonight. And so at this time, I do want to call up Sister Jayla Long, who is going to walk us through some safety tips, because how many know safety is essential in this season? And we are so grateful to have have leaders that keep that at the top of the list and it's a priority for them. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to you, Sister Jayla. Thank you, Evangelist Coleman. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. So I just have a few reminders for everyone to stay safe and healthy on this week. Listen, this week has been amazing, right? Like amazing. So we have a few more days and we just want to make sure that we're staying safe. We ask that everyone please follow the directions of our nurses and ushers and greeters. They are in place to make sure that we have a pleasant and safe experience each and every night. We do need everyone to wear their mask over your nose for the entire service. If you are not able to wear your mask all the way over your nose for the entire service, please stay home. We are broadcasting on Facebook and YouTube nightly. We want you to be included, but we have to stay safe. We prefer an N95 or KN95, KN95 mask. If you have a cloth mask, please wear the N95 or KN95 under it, please. And if you are sick or positive, everybody say with me, we need you to stay home please let's say that again please stay home again I know everyone wants to be here and again we are broadcasting on Facebook and YouTube nightly um, if for any reason again if you're able, not able to keep your mask on please stay home we want to maintain a three feet social distance I think this is about three feet I know we all want to hug and handshake and kiss, but we're going to ask, please don't do that. Refrain from touching your face, your mouth, and your eyes and your nose. We greet with a bow, a hand wave, or a little elbow, you know how we do it. And if you're coughing or sneezing, we want to make sure we're using good etiquette by coughing and sneezing in our elbows with our mask still on our face, please and thank you. And if you're going to be using a tissue, please double it with another tissue and you dispose of it, please, and thank you. Um, children, 
If they're going to be in our service, we do want to make sure that they can keep their masks on as well. And our restrooms, as you all know, are in the back um, next to the green room area. And then also to this side as well, next to our gymnasium. We want to get in and get out and come back to the services. We don't want to miss nothing, right? We don't want to miss nothing. And then last but not least, as we're exiting the building, we want to make sure that we're following the directions of our deacons and our ushers. Thank you so much for your cooperation. All right, let's hop into it. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Would you put your hands to, together for Jayla? Thank you for that awesome safety information and thank you saints for all week long honoring that we do thank you in advance for that and so at this time if God has made you able would you stand to your feet as our awesome HGIM praise team who has been taking us into glory night after night and has done an amazing job at doing that would you just join us as we worship and they take us higher amen We are so excited that you all, that we get to worship with you all on this evening. I'm not sure how your week has been going, whether it's been really amazing or whether it's just been really hard, but I do know that God is faithful and that there is nobody like him and that enough is a reason to give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, begin to worship God on this night with us.
kingdom come, thy will be done. Hallelujah. Come on, pray. Let's praise God on the night. Put your hands together. We want to give God the highest praise.
almighty God. Lord, we lift your name on high. Oh, we bless you, God. We bless you. Oh, God. Oh. How many of you would do anything just for God's glory? For your glory, God, we would do anything, God. We would cross the hottest desert, climb the highest mountain. Lord, if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. I'll cry.
You know, I learned a long time ago, learned a long time ago to not ask God to join my program, but if I could join his program. I want to be where he is. I want to do what he's doing, and I want to do it the way he would have me do it. Amen. And I found out that if you follow God's program, there is no flaws. There is no failure. There is no, oops, I wish I had done it a different way. Amen. We certainly bless God, amen, for each and every one here tonight. Let's get a lot of great big hand praise. Amen. Didn't we enjoy that service on last night? Amen. Wonderful, wonderful uh, consecration services. I'm going to ask our, our newly elected bishops if they would stand. Amen. Everybody can see who they are. Amen. Bishop Mosby, Bishop Hamilton, and Bishop uh, Mercedes. Amen. We praise God for them. Amen. Wonderful men of God. And one of the things I love about Higher Ground is uh, they are very, very, uh, very, very serious about ministry. That's the thing I want to say. Very serious about ministry, not just doing things to be doing things. So I'm happy to be a part of what God is doing here in uh, Higher Ground International Ministries. I certainly want to give honor to God for our presider, Apostle Baylor, in his absence. Let's say praise the Lord for him. <laughs> praise God. We certainly thank God for him. Amen. On our, our uh, tracks this morning, we were able just to communicate and just enjoy the fellowship, amen, of the pastors and bishops, and we certainly thank God for that. Also, we want to thank the Lord for our assistant presider. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord for Bishop T. Coleman, Terrence Coleman. Amen. Didn't he preach powerfully yesterday? Amen. The set man. Amen. That was the message. The set man. Amen. And God has a set man and woman. And we're not, we're, we're not just talking one gender, but God, whoever he has set, that person is going to move and they're going to move under the anointing and then the glory of God. So we praise God for that powerful message. And I'm one of these people, amen. I don't just forget about a message after the day is over with. I chew on it and on it and on it and get everything out of it that God has for me. Amen. I also want to thank the Lord uh, for our speakers here today. Amen. Prophet is Marcia. Morrison, God bless you. Amen. I'll be introducing her later. I don't know if she remembers me, but she, amen, came to my wife and I home, and she prophesied to us in our home, and uh, I want to tell you everything you said came to pass. Amen. Come on, let's get an accurate prophecy at hand, and we certainly thank God for that. You know, some folks flow in the prophetic, and others flow in the pathetic. Amen. So I thank God for the prophetic. Amen. Very grateful and thankful to the Lord for that, for the move of the Spirit of God. Amen. And let's have a wonderful time tonight, you all. We can enjoy the presence of the Lord. We can enjoy what God is doing in the house. We don't have to look around. As a matter of fact, amen, I'm going to act like I'm at home. Just look around so, you know, you can see who behind you and just take, take a moment and look around. Amen. Sometimes people want to look back. Amen. They get up, go to the bathroom, see who's here. Amen. So we know who's here. But the most important thing is that the Spirit of God is here tonight. Isn't that right? Amen. And so we want to we want to allow God to just take over tonight. We want to be under a Holy Ghost arrest tonight. Amen. We don't want to be thinking about anything else. I just want God to just take over. We want a Holy Ghost take over. How many want a Holy Ghost take over? Come on. There's nothing like being taken over by the Spirit of God. Amen. We're going to move forward. Uh, at this time, our program calls for an international talk. Uh, and we're going to have an international talk by our newly uh, uh, elected bishop. And that's none other than Bishop Ricordi Bersetti. Let's say praise the Lord as he comes with our inter international talk for tonight. That's you. Amen. He's looking around. That's you. Amen. Amen. I guess he's saying, I'm, I'm a bishop? Yeah, we did that last night. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. It's an honor to be here once again for the past, I think, three years. I remember the last conference we had here. 2019 in July, and glory to God, I am here with you face to face. Amen. Hallelujah. Last night, it was a tremendous moving of the Holy Spirit. 
I feel the Holy Spirit running down my veins from head to foot. It's the acceleration of glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thank God, especially for the protection from my travel from Philippines going here. And I thought that in U.S. it's normal, but we're the same in the Philippines. But it doesn't matter to me. What matters most to me is that I am here with you, Amen. praising the word, praising the name of Jesus, Amen. lifting up his name. We have to accelerate the kingdom of God and the glory that we have been experienced last night. As I can see, the clothes that I wore last night, it was a sacred responsibility. It's not unusual. But glory to God, He continues to use me in the Philippines and in Abu Dhabi. We have church in Abu Dhabi. And I thank God for all my co-workers there, especially Pastor Jacob Abando, Pastor Emil Duca there, Elder Lyndon. I know they're watching right now. God bless you, man of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. And all the brethren in Abu Dhabi, God bless you there. Keep safe. And in the Philippines, during the time the pandemic was started, it was hard for me. Well, I've been experiencing a mother and a father alone in my house. But, glory to God, the works continue. The works continue. One way, pastor told me, Pastor, we need to stop evangelism. We need to stop building churches. I said, okay. If God's will, I will stay here at home. But God knows my heart. He knows what's in my mind. He called me to, soul, to save the souls. He called me to build His kingdom. He called me to accelerate the kingdom of God. He used me to accelerate His name, lift up His name on high, and save more souls. And I thank you for all your prayers here. Even though we in the Philippines and in Abu Dhabi, sometimes it's difficult and very hard for us to communicate of the time like here. But God always with us. He is with us. And this time, glory to God, we will hold on together to accelerate the anointing that God has given to us. Right now, we will lift up the kingdom of God. God used its JM to see the works internationally. He used our, our presiding bishop, Apostle Bellor, with his assistant, Bishop Coleman. That's why me and you are here tonight because God called us. He put us here in the high ground so that we can see the needs. We can see the souls. We can see the kingdom of God that it must be built in every places to all nations. As what the apostle did in Luke 24, verse 247. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. Somebody say, preach. 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 Into his name. To all nations. 
beginning at Jerusalem. And that's why we are here right now. God called us in its JM because we are here at the high ground and we saw souls are needed, they need us to be saved, place where need to be built the kingdom of God. And thank God for He used us, He used me, He used you, every one of us here, He used us because we have that responsibility to do in the kingdom of God. And I thank you for all your prayers in Abu Dhabi, in the Philippines. Even though the pandemic was critical, but we build churches in the Philippines. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Basig Sig told me, Pastor, what happened? It's hard for us to go there in the places where souls need us. But what happened during the pandemic? We build one church. And right now, we open two churches in two places. Oh, hallelujah. We have to accelerate whatever it takes. In season or out of season, we will preach the word of God. Hallelujah. I, I thank you once again. Without your prayers, hallelujah, in the Philippines and in Abu Dhabi. Without you, the work there will get critical. But through your prayers, everything will accelerate smoothly because of the glory of God that He put in us. Me and you and all of us here, we work together hand in hand, in prayers that the name of Jesus will be lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory, hallelujah. Praise God. Once again, thank you for your, for your prayers. Thank you to all your concern in Abu Dhabi and in the Philippines. God bless us all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Let's give uh, Bishop Ricardi another hand. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. We certainly bless God for the Philippines. I had the honor of going uh, to the Philippines with Bishop uh, Baylor and Apostle Baylor and Bishop Coleman. And um, I just, you know, have some funny things to remember about that trip. First, I was extremely hot. So he's laughing already. Amen. And uh, I mean, as soon as I step outside, I start sweating and he's looking at me like, what's wrong with him? But uh, well, one of the things that kind of uh, stuck with me is, you know, we're in the service, and I mean, these people, they, they really love the Lord, and, and uh, you know, and here in America, you know, we say Jesus, and everybody like, yeah, what? Well, you say Jesus in the Philippines, and you get a big roar of people praising God. Amen. And that was amazing to me, you know, uh, because Bishop uh, uh, Bersetti would do the interpreting uh, as we were ministering, and, uh, you know, so you see a lot of things that you don't normally see in regular service. So we preach it and everybody's in the uh, sanctuary and in comes a dog, you know, down the front, walking past and looking around. And, and I'm thinking somebody going to chase them out of here. And, uh, nothing happened. So I'm like, well, they allow the dogs to be in the service, too. Amen. So everybody getting some Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's what it's about. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. So we bless God for the Philippines, and we just thank the Lord. Another thing, your mom, uh, they had blessed us with some gifts, uh, some shirts they bought for us. And so they gave Bishop Baylor his shirt. He put it on. It fitted perfectly. Gave Bishop Coleman his shirt. He put it on. It fitted perfectly. She gave me my shirt. And, I'm <laughs> and she says, uh, you need an expansion. <laughs> I'm like, okay. So <laughs> Right. So and then, you know, we got to the point where we were doing baptizing. We had about 27 people to be baptized. So it was me and Bishop Coleman to do the baptizing, you know. And so 
We want to see where we're going to baptize the folks. And uh, Bishop Coleman, you know, he got out there swimming around, and and uh, he went further and further. I'm like, hey, now don't go too far, cause I don't swim. <laughs> Amen. So after he finished showing off, you know, he said, we, "It's good right here." So I went out and we did the baptizing. So I'm really happy. I have really, really good memories about the Philippines, and looking forward to going back again. So let's give again Bishop Bersadi a hand. Thank you. Amen. At this time, we're going to uh, prepare to receive our offering for tonight. I'm going to ask if I could use this podium right here. I just have a, a few things I want to just say in regards to giving. Amen. And uh, we, we're just so grateful and thankful to the Lord for your support of HGIM. Thank you, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I just want to read something from St. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Very familiar passage of scripture. Amen. Luke 6, 38 reads, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, and running over it shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with, though, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. I just want to just give a little backdrop uh, history on this particular scripture. Uh, during that time, they would go to the uh, merchants to buy grain, wheat, whatever they were buying for the day. And many of the folks going out to buy, they would wear long robes because there was a chance that they would encounter a merchant that was generous. And so this is still dealing with the law of reciprocity, uh, sowing and reaping. So if you were blessed of God, you could get a merchant that would give you something that was running over. So they would have these long robes that they would make them look like bags, and the merchant would just pour the grain or the wheat over into it. So that's what Jesus was saying, give and it shall be given to you, good measure. And then some merchants will let you shake it up and pat it down. So shaking together and running over, shall men given to your bosom. So they would leave from the merchant with all of this grain and wheat. So that's what, that was the backdrop behind why Jesus said that, give and it shall be given to you, good measure, press down. Shaking together and running over in your bosom shall men give. For with the same measure that you meet with, it shall be measured to you again. So again, that's the law of reciprocity in action right there. When you, when you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. When you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. Now, there are many blessings that God bestow upon people that are generous and given to the Lord. And some blessings you really can't share with everybody because some folks start hating on you and thinking you got to be doing something wrong. Amen. But how many know when you are blessed, you're blessed. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed when you come. You're blessed when you go. You're blessed when you're broke. Amen. Because God, amen, said he will supply your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. So even when you're broke, you're not broke because, amen, you know Jesus. Amen. And that's why I always tell people, give God some praise on credit because you know his credit is good. Amen. <laughs> For things that he hadn't already done that has not been manifested in your life. So look, look to God to bless. Amen. There is no failure in God. In the book of Genesis chapter 18, verse number 14, the question was asked when uh, the angels went to Abraham, uh, is there anything too hard for God when Abraham left? And then if you look in Jeremiah 32, 17, the writer says, ah, now I know there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. So there is nothing too hard for God. Amen. So I want to challenge you today to give cheerfully and not grudgingly or of necessity. Give from your heart. Give because you know God is good. Give on credit because you know God's credit is good. Amen. And I'm telling you, it works. Giving works. Amen. Giving works. Um, we're asking if the bishops would give $200. So we got three, two, three new bishops. So that's $600 right there. Amen. Amen. They, they keep on smiling, brethren. Amen. Amen. So, uh, so the bishops are asked to give $200. Uh, the uh, JOs, uh, jurisdictional overseers, are asked to give $150. The pastors are asked to give $100. The uh, evangelists and ministers are asked to give $50. And all the saints, we're asking you if you will give $25. And I'm telling you, you will never give to God too much. Remember, God's pockets are deeper than yours. His hands are bigger than yours. Amen. That's why he says he would open windows of heaven, pour out, you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive because he would overwhelm you if he gave you everything he has. Amen. So give God cheerfully and not grudgingly. So at this time, we're going to pray over this offer we're about to receive, and then we'll have our deacons and ushers come. 
Uh, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you're blessed, that we will give cheerfully to your glory. We pray, oh God, that as we give, oh God, we will give, oh God, Lord, with the earnest expectation, oh God, that we can never outgive you, Father. And Lord, that you are a reward of them, oh God, that, Lord, seek you, oh God, that trust your word, oh God, and stand on your word, oh God. Lord, we pray that you are blessed bountifully, oh God, in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Amen. All right, at this time, we're going to call our deacons and ushers, amen, as we give. Amen. Tonight, and um, one of the things uh, Apostle Baylor always say, and that is uh, that the uh, bishop position is a giving position. Amen. So bishops, we have to give and lead by example. Also, there are five ways we can give. We can see that on the screen. You got the Cash App. Uh, you can text HGIM1. You can give through Givelify. You can give through website HGIM.us, and you can also give through PayPal. So there are a number of ways you can give. Amen. And as I always say, you know what's in your wallet. Amen. Some folks don't carry cash. They carry a card. Amen. Use your card. Amen. To the glory of God. Praise God. Here you go. Amen. You can just raise your hands. The uh, deacons and ushers will come to you. Don't forget our new bishops up here. Amen. When I'm at home, I tell them to play some giving music. You know, folks, when they got some cheerful music, they like to give and dig a little deeper, you know. There you go. God had the set man for the message on last night. Today he has the set woman for the word on today. And so we're anticipating a powerful move of God on tonight. Amen. At this time, we want to, we're going to have a video that's going to be played. And we're calling uh, Elder Monica Roby. Uh, she's going to come and uh, just kind of lead us at this point. Amen. For the uh, Global Impact Partners. Amen. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, media, can you play the video that was uh, asked to be played for the uh, Global Impact Partners? The Higher Ground International Ministries Global Impact Partnership. who we are. In 2005, God commissioned Higher Ground International Ministries Incorporated to reach people in need all around the world, and it has been a remarkable journey. Our goal is to provide humanitarian aid, economic empowerment, and a vehicle to plant and build churches in some of the poorest regions in the world. Because of our global impact partners, we are preaching the uncompromised word of God all around the world. To date, we have over 130 churches spanning eight countries and five continents, including the United States of America, Kenya, South Africa, the Philippines, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Guyana, and a mission in Russia. What we've done, dug a well which provides clean drinking water for thousands in Nairobi, Kenya, provided food and school supplies to families in the USA, currently building churches in Bangalore, India, and the Philippines, provided food and water to typhoon survivors in the Philippines, delivered disaster relief for 3,000 plus drought and famine afflicted people in Kenya, gave care packages for orphans in Russia. From our beginning in 2005, this has been a completely faith-based outreach. To date, we have no major corporate sponsors or endowments. We depend completely on God, placing the need upon the hearts of his servants to give his work through the efforts of Higher Ground International Ministry. Partner with us. Alone, no one can reach millions of hurting people around the world, but together we can work for Jesus Christ's great cause through mission trips, humanitarian, and mission outreaches. By partnering with us, you can grow, 
change and impact lives all around the world. Lord, everybody. Um, so my task today is to present the partner appeal. I want you guys to give a round of applause if you have enjoyed the conference thus far. Is that it? Y'all can't get a little louder than that. <laughs> I know I have, and we would not be able to do this conference year after year without our wonderful givers. So I'm asking you guys to take it a step further and become a global impact partner, GIP for short. That means you are going to be doing awesome things with, uh, by giving with your finances to help us further the kingdom of God. We just heard uh, Bishop, our new elect Bishop Mercedes, tell an awesome and wonderful testimony about how HGIM is doing great, awesome, and amazing things over in the Philippines. Um, I'm super excited to be able to do this task because we have a goal of 200 new GIP partners. That's a very, very, very small number. And we have a, uh, quite a ways to go, so I am appealing to everyone that is in this room, that is watching online, to become a global impact partner. Um, becoming a global impact partner means that you'll be able to uh, further help the kingdom of God and the advancement of the kingdom of God uh, with HGIM. Um, like I said, we are super excited because we have a new database system in place. Um, so we are asking all of our current uh, partners to re-sign up. That does not mean that you will be double giving. We just need to make sure that your information is updated. Your phone number, your address, we know over the pandemic, God has been blessing his people so much that they've been blessed with new homes. So we want to make sure that you guys stay connected. So if you are currently a member and a partner, kudos to you, hats off to you, because without your giving, we would not be able to do this. Um, also, with our new partners, we we, are, uh, we have a little gift for those who sign up. Um, you can do that uh, three different ways. You can text I am GIP to 314-375-4271 or by scanning the QR code on the poster at our Global Impact Partners table, which is located right outside of the doors. Or you can fill out the card the old school way and drop it in our uh, box that is also located at the table. So I'm asking everybody, if you have not partnered with Higher Ground International Ministries, please, please, please do so. You don't even have to be a part of Higher Ground International Ministries to partner with Higher Ground International Ministries. So I'm asking everybody, even if, if you want to do it right now, you can do that right now. We'll give you a couple of minutes to be able to do that, uh, to actually text IMGIP, that is in all caps, to 314-375-375. 4271. And so I'm asking you guys to help us reach that goal of 200 new members by tomorrow. By tomorrow. When do we need to reach that 200 goal? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you guys, and I ask that you guys please help us to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's give Sister Roby a hand. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we certainly want to advance the Global Impact Partners, and I'm telling you, we have a new director and uh, evangelist Marguerite Jeffries, and she's she's on fire. I'm telling you, she's really. Uh, uh, we had a Zoom party on le last Saturday, and uh, she's really excited about really making sure that this uh, thing moved forward. And as uh, Bishop Coleman said, uh, I think on our first night, um, Sister Tanya Stewart did a wonderful job, 
And sometimes what God does is he will have one person run, pass the baton, and then somebody else take it up. That's what Paul said, I planted, Apollos watered, but God give the increase. So what we're looking for is an increase from the Lord and the Global Impact Partners. So we just thank the Lord for uh, GIP, and we are moving forward. And I believe we're going to get those uh, 200 uh, members, amen, or partners. At this time, we have a selection uh, from the HGIM praise team. Let's say praise the Lord as they come. It will change your app. 
tell them, use your weapon. Come on. Come on, tell them, use your weapon. Come on. You may say, what is my weapon? The power of prayer. The power of fasting. The power of trusting God. The power of knowing what the word of God says about who you are. Amen. One more time, use your weapon. Amen. Praise God. We certainly bless God for the HGIM praise team with that beautiful selection. Now, my family will tell you, amen, I'm probably going to be singing that for the next couple of days. Just that phrase. I don't really remember the words, all the words to any one song, but I think I can do that. Amen. Use your weapon, amen. We certainly bless God, amen, for that. Amen. Thank you for giving me a song for the next two days, amen. Amen. All right, my task right now is to introduce our speaker for this evening. Praise God. Let's say praise the Lord for the word. Amen. Praise God. And I'm telling you, I just believe God has something great for us on tonight. Amen. I have to put my magnifier on this because her, her bio is so long that the font on this is like I'm looking at ants crawling around on the, on the paper. Amen. So I'm not going to try to read everything, but I'm going to read uh, some of it. Uh, this, of course, young lady um, has an academic history wherein she attended the Warden School University of uh, Warden School University of Pennsylvania. She has triple masters of business administration degrees, an MBA in entrepreneurial uh, management, an MBA in strategic management, and in finances. She attended Washington University. Amen. When she graduated uh, with a Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering. And honors and achievements, she has the Washington University McKelvey School of Engineering Alumni Achievement Award. Uh, she uh, founded uh, diversity, uh, founding diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, council member and co-chair of strategic planning uh, committee. And I'm kind of jumping around here. Uh, she is the, she also received a reward, award, Washington University Academic Scholar, uh, a presidential scholar, uh, Jack and Jill Sorority Scholar, Merck Management Award, uh, Change Execution Management Professional, a Certified Master in Enterprise Wide Business uh, Process Management, uh, co authored highly acclaimed article in American Pharmaceutical Outsourcing entitled Key Contact Manufacturing Issues Facing Meta Virtual Pharmaceutical Organizations, uh, board member of prestigious Warden School's uh, African American MBA Association. Uh, she's named 2006 finalist in Warden New v Venture Competition, surpassing nominees from Harvard, Stanford, Wall Street, and other key business conglomerates. Uh, established, she established the Marcia A. Morrison, Marcia A. Morrison Future Leader a Scholarship granted to academically promising high school seniors. <sighs> Amen. I just got to say this. And she, uh, um, her in ministry, uh, she. Uh, has done a research, uh, in, uh, she's a research scientist, chemical engineer, executive philanthropist, business leader, uh, Ivy Leaguer, intercessor, preacher, mother, and woman of God. Amen. At this time, would you stand with me as I welcome to the lectern our speaker for this evening, none other than prophetess Marcia Morrison. Let's say praise the Lord as she comes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Come on and bless the Lord. Come on and bless him in here. Bless him in here. Doesn't really matter who I am. That was too much for me. I was just, just stop, just stop. Oh, but I can praise him and I can glorify him because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Tell your neighbor he's worthy for stuff that has not even happened yet. He's worthy for what's about to drop in here tonight. He's worthy for the impartation that's about to break off in your spirit. He's worthy. Oh God, to do the impossible for you. He's worthy. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice and see you. Lift up your voice and see you. Lift up your voice and see you. And shout unto God with a voice of triumph. 
For it is the Lord that gives us the victory. Somebody say victory, 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 victory. Somebody say victory, 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 victory. Victory, victory, victory. Acceleration and glory. Oh, bless him in here. Bless him in here. Bless him in here. Oh, he's swelling on your robe. Bless him in here. He's swelling in your area. I feel him. 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 Come on, give it to him. 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 Give it now listen, 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 listen. Now listen, listen, listen. I, I, I need you to tell your neighbor, I'm going to need you tonight. T -t tell three more people in your area, I'm going to need you tonight. T tell your neighbor, because unity is going to be imperative tonight. Uh-huh. That's right, that's right. You can clap your hands on that one. I'm talking about I shame. Tell your neighbor, I'm gonna need you tonight. I'm gonna need you tonight. Because when I praise, I need you to praise. When I worship, I need you to worship. When I shout glory, I need you to shout glory. Because unity is gonna break some yokes tonight. Unity is gonna cause the angel to penetrate tonight. I'm going to need you. I'm gonna need you. I'm gonna need you. I'm going to need you. I need you. I need you. I need you and I'm taking control over my role. I'm taking control over my area. I'm taking control. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just utter a sound, utter a sound, utter a melody, utter a harmony. Come on, let your soul break out in three-part harmony tonight. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just tell him yes. Just tell him yes. Tell God yes. Hey, 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 hey. There's a cloud in here, there's a cloud, there's a cloud. There's a cloud in here, there's a cloud. On your road, there's a cloud. Now we arrest this atmosphere and we declare fire, power, and glory. Fire, power, and glory. Fire, power, and glory. Jesus name to the degree that we are accelerated to the degree that we move faster to the degree that we can see what we've not seen before and can do what we've not done before in Jesus match this name all these things we bind and seal declare and establish with a prophet's decree in Jesus name Somebody said, in Jesus' name, 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 amen, amen, and amen. Put those hands together. Put those hands together. You may take your seats in the congregation. The blesser is in the room. The healer is in the room. The deliverer is in the room. The breaker is in the room. Just wave your hand in the atmosphere. Just wave your hand in the atmosphere. Say, I, 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 I,
Every chain broken, every fetter demolished. God's about to reveal secrets to you. He's about to drop some keys right on your lap. Hey. You can't tell me nothing if you ain't come through nothing. No, 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 no. I, I'm not talking about being in trouble. I'm talking about coming through. Coming through, come through, come through. I, I was once on the other side of trouble. Hallelujah. B -b but he brought me through. And, and he brought me out. And so, and Peter, when thou art converted, turn around and strengthen your brethren. But I got to be converted first. I got to get the victory first before. So, so, so tell your neighbor, there's victory in the house. Oh, oh, oh yeah, don't fool yourself and think you're going to stay in that condition. There is victory right in the house. Ah! Oh, he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here, he's here. We're not talking what we heard, we're talking what we know. And we know that all things have told us to It's in the near to sky. Ha, ha, ha. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let me mind my manners. Let me mind my manners. I need a hammer in here. I need a hammer in here. Woo! Yes! There's healing in your hammer. 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 You, you, you may take your seat. You tell your neighbor, come on, let's sit down, let's sit down, let's sit down. But it's like fire shut up in my bones. It's like a rock that sets on me. Sit down. I think there's a run in the house. Either we're going to do it together or we ain't going to do it at all. Atomic weapon and it's called praise. Cause I love a Shut up out of the old ghost Oh, Take your seats in the congregation of the righteous. Tell your name, I told you I'm gonna need you. Be 
Bishop Baylor, this one is for you. This one, this praise is for you, Bishop. This praise, come on. Come on, somebody, praise him for your bishop. Father, you rule and super rule. You reign supreme. We are submitted to your lordship. Every revelation that you drop in this house, we give you glory for it. We'll tell men and women everywhere that you did it to the glory of your honor and to the power of your matchless praise. All these things we bind and we seal in Jesus' name. Somebody said in Jesus' name. Somebody said in Jesus' name. Somebody said in Jesus' name. We decree that it is so and so it is. We bind it with an amen and amen and it is so. You may take your seats in the congregation of the righteous. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. We won't quench you, God. We won't quench you. We won't quench you because you're moving already. And we bless you for it. In the name of Jesus. And that was just a foretaste. <laughs> of glory divine, giving honor to God, who's the head of our lives. We bless the Lord for being here. We thank the apostle of this great work, Bishop Larry J. Baylor, for allowing us an opportunity to stand in this sacred place. Can you put your hands together one more time for, for your apostle? Hallelujah. We glorify God for you, Bishop. I'm looking right at which camera that's looking me in my face right here. Good Bishop, that is my brother. I have two brothers named Larry. And Larry J is my second brother. And I bless the Lord for you, brother. We glorify God for all that the Lord has done in your life. We bless God for the partnership, the collaboration, and for this great work that God has called you to. And you have not seen anything yet. Your best days have not happened. They are in front of you. And we declare in Jesus' name great expansion. We declare and we send divine healing through these fiber optic lines. Yes, God. And we declare the virtue of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, would hit you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. And your own revival will hit your house in Jesus' matchless name. And the same goes for Lady Tanika. And the same goes for Cameron. We thank you, God for it and we declare it we now submit this uh, to this atmosphere of glory hallelujah we bless the lord that he shall multiply you and return unto you uh, some ten thousand fold y'all know i ain't a lying prophet some ten thousand fold uh, hallelujah what you've sown and what you've given in jesus uh, matchless name somebody say in jesus name uh, somebody say in jesus name uh, somebody say in jesus name point your hand to that camera and say in jesus name uh, in jesus name uh, we decree that it is so and so it is. Put your hands together for your apostle. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And for Bishop Terrence Coleman that works tirelessly by his side, we bless the Lord for you. And is Lady Coleman here? Is Lady Coleman here? Amen. Bless the Lord for you. Bless you, bless you, bless Is Lady Tanika here? I'm not going to assume she's not. I'm not going to. Okay. All righty. Bless you. Love you much. Thank you for 
putting up with all the work that we do along with Bishop Baylor and Pastor Harshley and all that we do and just the labor. It takes a special woman to be married to an apostle. I'm talking about a true apostle. I ain't talking about these folk out here playing games. I'm talking about a true apostle. It takes a special woman of God to be married to a true apostle, a true bishop, because they have to share their spouses with the people of God. And so we thank the Lord for the grace that is on each one of the lives of these blessed women of God. To Pastor Marlon, bless you, Overseer Marlon. We love you to life. We love you to life, Lady Ida, wherever she is. I don't know where you are, Lady, Lady Ida. Bless the Lord for you. She's all the way in the back, hallelujah. She got that back row ministry. That's all right, we understand it, we understand. Praise the Lord, God bless you, God bless you. Amen, and to uh, Bishop Whittier, amen. Bless the Lord for you, for all the leaders within FMT, within Higher Ground International Ministries, and I'd like to announce, I don't usually tell what I give because ain't nobody's business but God's. But I did give like I was a bishop. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't trying to be one. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not trying to be one. Hallelujah. But whenever I get the opportunity to sow, you can't stop me. You can't stop me. Hallelujah. Because that is a weapon. It is a strategic instrument and a strategic tool to bring great increase. So I want you all to remember that. You don't have to be a bishop to sow like one. You don't have to be a pastor to sow like one. Hallelujah. And so we're looking for things to happen uh, in our lives. And I just wanted to give. It ain't like I, I'm coming in need. I, I just wanted to give because I understand the power of sowing and reaping. And then I love the Baylor family. Hallelujah. Amen. Where's Mother Baylor? Mother Baylor, Mother Baylor, Mother Baylor. Bless you, Mother Baylor. We love you. We love you. We love you. Bless you. Big hugs to you. We love you. Hallelujah. Now, 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 now. And to Sister Chanel that came along with me that's supporting and helping me. Wave your hands, Sister Chanel. Wave your hands, Sister Chanel. Morrison Ministries, Bright Path, Steam Academy, all of the things that God uh, has us working on together. Now, Bright Path, have anybody heard of Bright Path, Steam Academy? Y'all done heard a whole lot about Bright Path. You've heard a lot about Bright Path. Mm -hmm. Bright Path has a camp that's coming on July 22nd. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, listen up. I'm not going to ask you to volunteer, but listen up. <laughs> we got the volunteers we need. Bright Path has about 500 black youth that are signed up to come to that camp. Science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. That's what they're gonna be learning. They're coming from 17 states, four countries, 30 at Wash U, 160 on site in Camden, New Jersey, 25 in Ghana, two or three in Kenya and a couple of them from the Bahamas, black, ain't nothing wrong with it. Why am I saying this? Uh, Last year was my first time, Bishop Whittier read all that stuff. There's a, there's a purpose for it. Last year was the first time I'd gone back to Wash U in 30 years since I had graduated from there. I never went back on campus. I never went for a reunion. I never went to the bookstore. I never opened up their email. And I told them that. I was finished. It was because of the experience that I had when I was there. I'm preaching already. Racist to the bone. Tried to flunk me out. They didn't want me there because I was black and I was a female in chemical engineering. So there was never a black in my classroom. The professors were Middle Eastern, Maybe Southern American, 
Asian. God bless them for, for it all. But imagine that when you're not even considered, you're considered to be property in some of their countries. And now you want to learn engineering along with the non-blacks. So they made it as hard as they could make it for me to get through there. But the more they oppressed me, the more I performed. Because I had a God that was behind me, that empowered me, that gave me intellectual, supernatural insight. So when I left, I never came back. I was like Lot, well, not even like Lot's wife. I guess I was like Lot, because Lot's wife looked back. I didn't even look back. No salt for me, sir. Didn't look back. But it's right now that I recognize the purpose. We're going somewhere. I understand why I was oppressed. I understand it now. What I went through 30 years ago. They invited me to lunch last year and they said, they, they, they came to me. I'm saying this for a reason. They saw, somebody saw me on TV. Little black boy. Saw a Bright Path Steam Academy commercial. Well, it was an interview that Bishop Baylor, Apostle Baylor, set up with Fox 2. Black boy in prison saw me on TV. 28 years old and said, I want to help them. He so happened to be Koinky Dink. He so happened to be a student in WashU's prison education project. He contacted his teacher who so happened to be Koinky Dink, the associate dean of the School of Arts and Sciences, and she reached out to me and said, can he help y'all? Won't he will? I said, uh, I talked to Bishop Baylor and I talked to Pastor Harshley about it. I said, uh, and, and we, we all agreed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> However, <laughs> when I talked to the associate dean, she said to me, she said, oh my God you have what we need. And she introduced and introduced and introduced and introduced and the very day that she sent our information to the head of the biomedical engineering department at WashU, which is where I came from. They said, this is zeitgeist. This is zeitgeist. In other words, this is prophetic. Those are their words. We just said we need to connect with the black community, K through 12, alumni, and industry. And I'm all those. How can you get all of those in one person? We got Bright Path. I run three industries, pharmaceuticals, biotechnology, medical devices. I run it globally. And then I'm an alumnus. Now, now we got Moses coming back to Pharaoh's house. Tell your neighbor what you going through, baby. There's a purpose and they ain't seen the last of you. I said, remember me? They took me to lunch. I want to I wanna hasten through this because there's a message in this. They took me to lunch and they said, where you want to go to lunch? We want to take you to lunch. The officials from Wash, you and I said, I want to go somewhere black. <laughs> black owned restaurant, right down on Lindo. <laughs> B 
C-L-A-C-K. So we gathered and they kept looking at me funny. They kept, so what's wrong with y'all? Kept looking at me funny. And they had this bag and it was gifts and stuff. And they officially apologized on behalf of the university for the experience that I had 30 years ago. With tears in their eyes, they said, we're sorry, Marcia, we're so sorry. They crying, but I wasn't, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm good. And then they gave me gifts and said, we just, we're gonna make it up to you. And I'm like, there's nothing you can. However, you can pay it forward to the next generation. So we got scholarships and they ain't got to pay for air coming through there. You just, yeah. Why, why am I saying this? Why, why am I saying this? Bright Path STEAM Academy is not just science and technology and the little kids. And the, I ain't in the you know, youth ministry. I used to be. Somebody say a system. Somebody say a strategy. Somebody say a tool. Anybody heard about CERN? Anybody heard about that? How many, I, I need some hands. Sh show me your hands if you heard about CERN. Not many of you heard about it. That ain't new and until we get some scientists and technologists and engineering arts and mathematics that are prophetic in nature, we can just stop, all we can do is pray. So, 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 so now, uh, acceleration and glory, hold a finger there, hold a finger there, hold a finger there. So when we're talking acceleration and glory, the Bible says in Psalm 24 and 7, you know what, go, 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 can y'all pull that up for me? Go, can, can y'all pull it up for me? It, it, it shows us the end of a thing. And it, uh, scripture says, lift up your head, O ye gates. And be ye lift up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory, somebody say glory, shall come in. Now, 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 now what this does, what, what does this have to do with, uh, let's say, an academy? What does this have to do with your church? What does this have to do with your ministry? Because the scripture is talking about the, the gates that we're dealing with here. We're talking about gates and we're talking about portals and we're talking about passageways. We're talking about access points. Lift up your head, oh ye gates, and be ye lift up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Not he might, but he shall come in. He's coming in, he's coming in. He's, he's coming in to lift up your head. Oh, ye gates, and be ye lift up. It was a command to ancient doors. I can stay there and preach that all night. But these doors were ancient. They were old. They had already existed. And uh, if they were ancient then, in other words, they're unseen. Ain't nobody able to see these doors. Every city's got a gate. Come on, y'all. Every organization's got a gate. Oh, Lord God, great God. And you think that because you can't get in and you're not getting a promotion. Lord Jesus, help me today, God. There's a gate that you've got to penetrate. There's something called gate strategy that you've got to understand. And so we have the command to lift up. Now, David, uh, the historicity of the scripture suggests that uh, it was when David had recovered the ark from Obed-Edom's house, right? And uh, he tried to bring the ark into uh, the temple one time, uh, in the tabernacle one time, and uh, he was not able to be successful. And so uh, somebody died. Somebody say somebody died. Somebody died trying to handle the glory. Oh God, great God. You better be careful how you handle God's glory. Lord God, great God. He's got now prescriptions and uh, there's an engineering design around how we handle the glory of God. And so David 
went and got instructions. He went and studied the word of God and then understood, wait a minute, this glory has got to be handled on your shoulders. Come on now, it's got to be grounded. What happened to us was he got electrocuted. All that power above the mercy seat, between the cherubim, all that power circulating between all that metal. That's why you got to be grounded when you handle the glory. Is there any electrical engineers in the house? Do I have any engineers that understand you got to be grounded? Uh So then the ground now absorbs all of that electricity and then it will not end up going into your body and ending up being a situation with respect to execution and so and and, and electrocution so so now you got a situation where we were able to penetrate the gates the gates now are being lift up there's no key that was needed to lift up this gate but some gates have a key some gates uh, lord god have an access passageway and you need that intelligence you need to understand what's going to get you in the door you need to understand what's going to get you behind the gate you need to understand what's going to cause you to be successful against those that have control over the gate and then now the scripture also now foreshadows Jesus we're going somewhere here it foreshadows Jesus him now sprinkling his blood on the altar my God, great God, and now creating a new and living way, another passageway for us to enter in. And therefore, he now, uh, he, he rents uh, the veil in the midst. And now we have access to what we were shut out from, the gate of heaven. So then if we get this result, th- then something must have caused the success in terms of getting beyond the gates something caused whether it was david or whether it was jesus something caused this success in terms of being able to overcome being able to conquer being able to dismantle being able to just open up when the scripture speaks of uh, lifting up your head O ye gates and be ye lifted up these ancient doors these ancient Ancient now, ancient blockades, these elements that have been put in place decades and centuries ago to keep you out, not to allow you access. I hope you're getting this tonight. Not to allow you access, but something was able to cause the gates to be open. Something got a penetration there. And so I think that if we follow the model of Jesus, when it comes to how Jesus was able to cause those gates to lift up those gates to part those gates to open those doors to open I think we can do some forensics on what can cause you to get your stuff back oh God great God you gonna recover all tell somebody tonight this is the recovery room this is where you gonna recover everything that the devil has stolen you gonna recover everything that you lost my God even your marriages your health come on now your opportunities your business tell your neighbor you're gonna get it all back this is the recovery room and God's got now secrets and strategies that you did not consider tell your neighbor I told you I'm gonna need you tonight I'm gonna need your unity tonight we got to be unified to get our stuff back and not only are we gonna get our stuff back we're gonna build some new stuff that you ain't never seen before under the Yoshia we gonna create some stuff that you ain't never heard before my god because there's an divine intelligence hallelujah there's insight in here hallelujah and i didn't go through what i went through for no reason he's about to drop it in here so so you, you got these gates they're a system of access to either let you in or to keep you out. Oh God, great God. Now, 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 now let's talk about the access for a moment because there's some stuff that you went after that you did not get. There's some things that you knew that God did gave you in your spirit but you just couldn't get it manifest in your life oh lord jesus there were things that god prophesied 
when it comes to your ministry, when it comes to your church bishops, when it comes to your organization, but you're just not quite penetrating. Oh, Lord God, great God. I suggest that there's a gate that you need to get behind. And if you keep trying the same strategy the same way, you're going to get the same result. That's why Jesus said, enter by the straight gate. Lord God, in other words, what he was saying is this is a gate strategy. And this strategy, everybody ain't doing this one it's the straight gate it's the narrow way ah! see your problem is you copping off everybody else Jesus said go the other way the straight gate straight gate straight gate straight gate and he said strike that's a warfare term. Uh-huh. He said, don't, don't, don't fight like that. Strive to enter at the straight gate. The narrow way. Bright path. They didn't see you coming. No fighting. Because when Peter tried to fight, Jesus said, boy, let me put that ear back on him. This ain't about physical fighting in flesh and blood. Sweatless victory. Somebody say sweatless. Even though I'm sweating, your victory is going to be sweatless. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. You ain't gonna cry over that thing no more, no more, no more, no more. Oh. So the gate opened, it opened, it opened. It... Ah, that ain't the end of the story. There was an altar involved in the gate opening. There was a transaction that happened at Calvary that caused the gate to qualify to open. Y'all not with me. Y'all not with me. You not with me. I told you I'm going to need you tonight. Need you to stay with me. There was a transaction that happened. There was blood that hit that mercy seat. Ha! and God received the sacrifice somebody say sacrifice and the blood was good the blood still works tell your neighbor it still works you gonna need a blood bucket before it's over come on it still works ain't nothing you ever been through that the blood can get you out of ain't nothing you ever faced that the blood can't bring you through somebody say the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood of Jesus it will deliver bring you out give you access oh, the blood 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 will never lose its power you need the blood oh, you need the blood when you need to get in just invoke the blood somebody say the blood the blood the blood so 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 wait a minute now you you got blood sacrifice on an altar that was accepted by a god that could cause the gates to be open hold on now y'all y'all gotta you gotta forgive me i'm an engineer so i think process yeah yeah i think systemic steps i think realization i think output i think productivity come on come on you know how the church is you tell me you the head not the tail and you way behind no i'm not one of those i think okay well where is your proof if you're the head where is your proof come on come on if you're anointed where is your proof if you're a prophet where are the miracles 
Antiochia. If you're an apostle, who are you supplying? What churches have you built? Who submits to your anointing? I'm looking for evidence. So the blood had to be good because heaven's gates opened. All right, you don't, you don't believe me? The, blood, the Bible says in Hebrews 13 that the cross was the ultimate altar. My God, that blood was accepted by. So in other words, I know, like Jesus said and Paul said, I know the blood is good because you here. Oh, Jesus, y'all didn't like that. You ain't like that. I know the blood is good because higher ground international ministries exist. I, the blood is good because he saved your soul I know the blood is good because you ain't killed nobody by now I know the blood is good because you came off the straw it's good tell somebody it's good and it works 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 and it is eternal eternity past and eternity future ain't no such thing it's just eternal no you you don't like the eternity of God you don't like it you don't understand why that's important because he can go in your past and erase it all out he can go in your future and make sure it does not come to pass it is eternal An eternal priesthood forever making intercession for you and for did y'all hear that forever tell your neighbor forever means forever forever means forever forever means never ending forever means whatever you go through whatever you experience forever 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 Tell your neighbor, remember that forever. Remember forever. It's forever. You know how people say, I love you forever. They gone tomorrow. This ain't one of those. This ain't, this ain't one of those. He means forever. He will stalk you in your bedroom forever. So, so, so you mean I got an unlimited credit card of blood? Hey, hey. That's good in an eternal place. Y'all gonna laugh at me if I say what I wanna say. I promise you, you gonna laugh. I just wanted to do a Michael Jackson, Mama Say, Mama Say, Mama Kusa. I told you you were gonna laugh at me. I, you know, I, that's one of them carnal tongues. God, great God, but the blood. Okay, so, so, so if an altar was involved and the altar got results and those results are eternal, what you say? Dude, look, yeah, it's repeated. It's repeatable. It's repeatable. You talk like an engineer. How can I do this again? And again. And again. Matter of fact, I'm getting greedy. I'm going to do it for your sister and your brother. I'm going to do it for mama and them and Pookie and them. Ray, Ray. God, great God, great God. Hallelujah. 
It's got its own power. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's got its own delivery system. It's got its own logistics. He knows where to deliver right to your address. You ain't ever got to send it back. You ain't got to be a prime member. You just got to be saved. is it that Amazon gets your packages that you order to you when they handle multi-millions a day? If Amazon can get your stuff to you, so can the blind! Okay. There's an altar. I ain't gonna leave this altar alone. Because if it works and the blood works, you covered by the blood. Aye, 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 aye. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2 that there's a better covenant. Oh, God, great God, great God, great God. Y'all don't want me to preach. You don't want me to preach. You just, you sitting there looking at me funny. You're looking at me funny. But I'm going to preach anyway. Ah! The Bible says, the Bible, the Bible says, the Bible says. Now, the Bible says, the Bible says. Tell somebody better, better, better. Oh, that's better, that's better, that's better. But, but let me show you now. I told you I got to see how it works, how it works. So if you turn to Numbers, chapter number 23. We're preaching already, right? We just, we talked about Psalm 24. We, we mentioned Luke 13. Come on, come on, come on. Even Jesus said regarding anything that's placed on the altar, the gift that's placed on the altar, the Bible says uh, that it's the altar that sanctifies the gift. Um, did somebody say, listen, uh, it's the altar. We're going somewhere that sanctifies the gift. Um, there's more than one kind of altar. There's more than one kind. I'm going to show you what the devil's been doing to you. I'm going to show you why you take one step forward. You get drugged back too. I'm going to show you his system but I'm gonna show you the system that anybody can use because it's repeatable. We know that it opens gates. It opens ancient gates. Gates that your mama couldn't open and gates that your grandmama couldn't open and your great grandmama and your great 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 grandmama and your great 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 grandmama. That's why you can't get it open. I had a vision. We're gonna see this right here. It was a it was a vision within a dream. I was dreaming and I had a quick glimpse of a vision. It was about two months ago and there were uh, souls that were being purchased. It was just regular business. They were being purchased in the dark realm and it was by an ocean and these souls were just being bought. And it was actually at an altar where they were being bought. That was all I saw. And what God was saying, I'm gonna show you right here. So here's Numbers chapter number 23. I just wanna work this just for a minute to show you, ask somebody, uh, how does the system work? How, how does this system work? How? How does it work? How did we, as a country and as a people, how did we get like this? And if I know how we got like this, I can reverse engineer. Now I'm talking to us. Oppressed folk, let me put it like that. Numbers 23. Look, 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 y'all. 22 and verse 1. Let's start there. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. They saw all that you'd done, done already, and they got intimidated. Watch this. And Moab was sore afraid of the people because they were many and Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. So the children of Israel was winning wars. And I mean, they were breaking it down and Moab got afraid because they pitched a tent next to them. They say, we next. Moab said unto the elders of Midian, now shall this company lick up all that are round about us as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. In other words, are they gonna beat us up and kill us? And Balak, 
the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, a prophet. He said, wait a minute, we got to do something about this. We got to do something about this. Sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Pethor, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people to call him saying, behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. They done came out of bondage and they about to do some stuff. We don't know where they going. We don't know what they're about to do, but we got to deal with them before they deal with us. Well, Jesus, uh huh. And so he says, behold, they cover the face of the earth. They're multiplying and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me these people. Hold on y'all now. He says, curse them for they are too mighty for me when you get to be bigger than your enemy and they cannot compete toe to toe with you not now now um i've got people that watch me So now we got to start talking in code. You understand? We have to start talking in prophetic code. Because I deal with multi-dollar deals. I counsel CEOs. They want what I have. They just can't explain it. I had the provost of a university, the vice chancellor, rub me on my arm and tried to rub off of me what they wanted onto them and thought that it would come up. And then they said, I need to hang out with you. Wow. We got to talk in a little bit of code right now. You'll get it. Tell your neighbor, you'll get it. You'll get it. And if you don't understand, tell them, nudge me on my thigh. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Not only do they watch, but they want to make sure that my, mm, there's no conflict of interest. Just like I check them out to make sure there's no conflict of interest. So they sweep the internet, they sweep Facebook, they look on LinkedIn, they see who you connected to. They even look at your sermons and your messages. So we're going to talk in code. Are you prophetic tonight? Are you prophetic? Ask your neighbor. You're going to need your prophetic anointing tonight. You going Bishop told you, get in them classes. Apostle told you, get in those classes. You're going to need it tonight. He said, they're getting too big. They're getting too big. They're getting too big. They're getting too large. They're too smart. They're too talented. They're too skillful. They know how to dunk ball. But you get them in the lab, ain't nobody better than them. They're growing. We tried to kill them. And they're growing. We tried to throw them in jail. But they're still growing. We tried to give them CDC funds to get them bound up because we knew that they were so hungry for money. We knew it was going to put them in jail. Come on, Zion. PPP funds. Jail. They're getting too big, too strong. Everything they get into, they take over. We got to curse them. They're the best doctors. They're the best surgeons. We ain't going to let nobody know that they were the first. We'll steal their concepts and steal their patents. We'll steal from them. Because they're too smart and they don't even know what they got. Put drugs in their communities. When it's in their communities, it's a drug problem, war on drugs. When it's opioids, oh, it's mental oppression. We got to do something about this. It's got a different face depending on your shade. You must be somebody if they do all of that to curse you and you still here 
Look at your neighbor and say, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. You can't take me out because the blood still works. Oh. Said, I, said I gotta curse him. I said no. But when I'm with them, they want what I got. Y'all, y'all know something about that Holy Ghost. I can't explain, but I got it. That's them. Something about these people can't explain it, but we need it. He said, curse. He didn't make no bones about it. He didn't say, maybe deal with them. You know how folk, you know, deal with them. You know what you mean. Just take care of the matter. Deal with it. You know what you mean. He said, he said, come now for I pray thee, verse 6, curse me that Curse these people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail that we may smite them and that I may drive them out of the land. For I what? In other words, yada. I heard about you. I know you can do it. Balaam, I know you can do it. I heard about you. He says that he whom thou blessest is blessed. Wait a minute now. He got a reputation for if you bless them, they blessed. But if you curse them, they cursed. He said, I heard about you, Balaam. I heard that your prophecies come to pass. Because your prophecies come to pass, I need you up in here. I need you up in here. I got a job for you. I need you to decommission some folks. The prophet. It must mean that the prophet has the power to do so. You got more power than you think. Let, let, let me finish my Sunday school lesson. He says, he says, and then the elders, they brought him money and all of that. He, but, but Balaam said, no, I ain't going to do it. They came back and said, we'll give you all kinds of promotions to do it. Uh-huh. And then, then God said, okay, go on with him. Go on with him. See what, verse number one in 23, this is where we going to land for a minute. To show you the system, to show you the process here. And Balaam said unto Balak, build me here seven altars. He said, okay, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm curse them. But in order to curse them, I need altars. You got me? Are you with me? If I got you, I don't need nobody else. I don't need nobody else in here as long as I got you. Because you my repeatable brother. <laughs> You, you. He said, I need seven altars. Se- se- why you need seven? Why do you need seven? Al-? He said, I need seven altars. And then it goes on and it talks about, you know, the seven oxen and the seven rams uh, to now a sacrifice on the altar. What are these seven altars uh, that were needed? He said, if I'm going to do a real good job in cursing them, I need seven individual altars. Somebody say seven. Somebody say seven. Somebody say seven. Somebody say seven. Do you want to know what the seven altars actually were? Do you, do you want to understand what they were? And this is what you've been dealing with. Because when you try to take one step forward, you drug back two. The first altar was an altar on the land. And what an altar does, bottom line, it's the meeting place between the divine and the material. It's the meeting place where you make transactions that are eternal. Mm. it's the meeting place where you offer stuff up to a God Lord God great God so that you get the results that you need in the earth it's the meeting place where now you sacrifice you either give your life or you give a ram or you give a bullock you give a goat that says I'm going to give you something material in exchange for a supernatural backing and a supernatural power because I need a covenant with you God whatever God God you dealing with the God of Baal I need a covenant with you that you will forever curse these people
people. So I bring you a sacrifice, my God, great God, that makes sure that I tie up the bondage and the cursing in their lives. I'm making a covenant with you, Balaam. I'm making a covenant so that you will forever cause them to be barren, that you will forever cause them now to get divorces, that you would forever cause their families to always be single parent homes, that you will forever cause them to have financial ruin. I'm making a covenant that is unbreakable. It's unbreakable. So you fighting against something that's been fixed in eternity. You you, you trying to get a job and start a business and it's already fixed and unchangeable. It's already set against you. Altar number one was on the land. And that means that any time you need to now be successful, nothing but failure would happen in your life. Nothing but financial ruin and financial failure. Marriages would fail. Sickness and disease would prevail. Oh, God, great God. And you did not know that there was a God backing that altar. You did not know that there was a covenant that was made concerning you. You did not know that the odds were already stacked against you. That's why you need another government. That's why you need the blood of Jesus that gets you access. That's why you need a better covenant. Lord God, great God, the second altar was an altar that they placed on the sea. They placed it on the water. And the reason why they placed it on the water and the reason why they placed it on the sea was in order that women would become non-productive. Women would be sexually promiscuous. Lord God, great God. They did it so that women could not have children and that they would again be barren. Lord Jesus, help me today. They gave now this altar. They put sacrifices on the altar and said forever. We want to make sure that they have now no regard for their bodies. My God, they have fibroid tumors oh Jesus before you got here the covenant was already made you were already a plan in the enemies oh Jesus Lord God great God the next one was an altar this one was in the graveyard this was where now they considered the spirits of the dead to come and kill those that they wanted to curse so in other words no matter what you do You put your hands up, you put your hands down. You say yes sir to the blue. No matter what you do, there's already an altar that has been defined that is now determined to kill a people, to murder a people. My God, great God, the next altar, Jesus help me today. That's why it ain't just about voting. You got another president, you got a whole nother political party in office, but your people are still being murdered and slaughtered my Jesus you ain't gone deep enough with this my God great God you have not unraveled the real root of the problem you have not gotten to the source of where the issue is because whenever there is a covenant it is only able to be broken in a court and superseded by a better covenant Jesus help me today To tell your neighbor the odds were stacked against you before you got here. They, 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 they were stacked against you before you got here. That they, they, you were designed to fail. Uh huh. These were covenants. Covenants are unbreakable unless you go to court to break that covenant. Jesus, help me today. But, but, but my Bible told me to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And when I get in the presence of God, my Jesus, I'm about to sue the devil. Oh, Jesus, because he's got some stuff that belongs to me. There are covenants in a Agreements. There are altars set against me, and we're about to get free tonight. You want to know what the rest of them are? Lord Jesus, there was one, my God, that's made of images, voodoo dolls. They'll make an image of your church. They'll make an image. Don't think that the saints don't do it. Don't think that folks don't do it. Jesus, help me today. 
let your people see my God the strategy of the enemy that's why you can't get ahead that's why your children are struggling ADHD your baby ain't crazy there's an altar that now has defined all of our children as mentally ill and crazy but tell your neighbor your baby ain't crazy and you are not mentally sick you have been predefined by an altar the other altars were associated with my Jesus curses on your money curses on your business curses my God on your creativity but tell the devil we see you tonight we see your plan and all we got to do is throw down your altar smash your altar remove my name off your roll take my family out your business get me out of your junk I don't belong here I didn't even know I was on your list you're redlining me in the spirit you didn't even know that redlining existed my God but he's got a line that he set for you and I'm here to tell you that tonight we unravel the altars tonight you gonna throw it down with your mouth tonight you see that there's victory at the gate when you identify the altar that's got your family's name my God no matter how much fasting and praying you do my Jesus until you take that thing to court it's just like being married that's why Jesus he simulated the relationship with us based on a marriage covenant that means you belong to me and I belong to you and you get all the rights and privileges that are due you from this relationship the bride of Christ Allah there's a marriage supper that's on its way but I'm a child not just a child but I'm a son of the living God I got rights I got privileges my Jesus I'm a bride I got a ring that says the house belongs to him but it also belongs to me and tonight you gonna get your stuff back and tonight you gonna get it all back and tonight the glory is gonna fall on your roll but not only is it gonna fall you gonna provoke it to go I need the intercessors where are my intercessors wave your hand if you're an intercessor wave your hand if you're an intercessor give me a few microphones bring me the worshipers come on where's the praise team where's the worship team the one that says you got an atomic bomb in your praise he's about to do it tonight somebody say do it do it do it do it do it holy ghost do it 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 shama under the hook I'll need you to lift up your voice in about 10 seconds. Head to the horse of Hanna. You need to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Every disease, every infirmity. Yes, Lord. Come on, Zion. Come on, come on. Come on. Where are the dancers? Where are the dancers? I need your whole body. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. 
tell your neighbor I told you that I need you tonight. So when I praise, you praise. When I holler, you holler. When I leap, you leap. When I shout, you shout. to your mouth. Where are my intercessors? Yes! Yes! Yeah! We come to ambush the enemy! We come to tear down the altar! Atomic weapon! He said that that shit, that that That's right, baby, dance. Dance, dance, dance. Dance out of it. Dance into your deliverance. Lose your devil. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. It still works, it still works, it still works, it still works. Somebody shout! Free, 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 free! Deliver! Until you feel it snap. Praise until you feel it break. Praise. Praise. That's it, that's it, that's it. Lose your mind. Till the devil can't find you no more. Lose your mind. Till your church is revitalized. Lose your mind.
Keep it right there, keep it right there. Keep it right there. Look and see if your neighbor's smoking. Your neighbor should be smoking with the glory. Your neighbor, don't let your neighbor stay the way that they came. Don't let them. You are responsible for your neighbor. Baby, those are the altars being shattered. And when altars are shattered, revival breaks out. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Keep your spirit up. 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 The angels are about to penetrate. They're already here. They're already here. They're already here. They're already here. The blesser is in the room. 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 Altars being shattered, demolished. I declare your business shall multiply. This organization shall achieve its goals. Who's an intercessor here? Who's... Hold it one second. Keep your spirit up. Keep your spirit up. There's somebody here. Keep it right there. Keep it right there. There's somebody here. You have a bill that's due that you cannot pay. And it's nearly $500. You cannot pay it. Where are you? It's nearly $500. And you cannot pay it. Where are you? Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. There you are. There you are. There you are. Uh huh. There you are, precious. What bill is it? It's my car note. It's your car note. How much is your car note? 379. My rent is 585. Your rent is 585. Do you have money for your rent? No. Keep your spirit up. She is your insignia that it's already done. It's the rent that he's going to pay tonight. I'm not talking about in the spirit. I'm talking about I'm going to write you a check. Not just, I'm going to write you a 500, then I'm going to give you an 85. Because God said that there was somebody here that had a bill they could not pay. He told me that while I was sitting over there. What does this mean to you? What does this mean to you? That whatever you dealing with in your life tonight is over. It's already done. When you walked through the door, now it's time to go crazy. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't, don't get scared, y'all. I ain't finna raise no offering. I, no, I ain't finna raise an offering. Oh, so what if I did? Can, 
Can, can you do me a favor? What, what time is it, y'all? What, what time? Y'all wasn't even looking at the time. 927. In 10 minutes, we done. In 10 minutes, you're about to build something with your mouth. In 10 minutes, you're about to create it. Come on, top of our show. It's in your mouth. It's in your mouth. In 10 minutes, within 10 minutes, we're about to build a city, y'all. We're going to build a city with houses. We're going to build a city with schools. We're going to build a city with, with, with grocery stores and uh, with banks. And uh, He's about to fund your business. I've got the connections with the millionaires and billionaires. They say we want to fund black businesses. Oh, God, great God, great God. But you can't go with these all to the in your life. He never about shut up a hundred. Yes, Lord. So we're going to finish our business tonight. Yes, Jesus. Oh, God. Are you ready? 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 Ask your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Ask your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Ask your neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Are you Judah to take take us first? Can 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 y'all can y'all take us first? They coming, I ain't even asked them to come. They're coming, we ain't gonna stop you. My God, great God. Are you ready? 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 Come on, lift up your voice. Come on, take us up higher. Take us up higher. Take us up higher. Take us up higher. You're going higher, 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 higher. You're going higher, 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 higher. Ah! 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 Help me out. Come on, come on. Just sing under the prophetic if you can. Y'all messed up. Jesus. Look at the people. Look at the people coming. Look at the people coming.
stepped on me. And if you believe in transfer, mm, ain't got but 33. If you believe in transfer,
anointed, protected, multiplied, wealth untold, protected riches to do the will of God. The spirit of Jesu run upon this baby. They've been oppressed but not moving forward. Been oppressed because the doors are not been opened and gates have been shutting your face. It's a spirit of oppression. Some of you was even dancing, even in the spirit of oppression. Amen. And God told me there are seven people, amen. If you just lay hands on them, that spirit of oppression is going to be broken. Is that seven people here? We're up on the stage right now, and I'm gonna just go lay hands on you. Oppression, go in the contact in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, break that spirit of oppression off that baby right now. Spirit of oppression in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I come against it. In the name of Jesus, get attacked by the spirit of oppression in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, break it off. 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 Break it off! Break it off! Break it off tonight! Break it off! Nice. 
service. What a move of God. Ma, ma, ma. <laughs> ma, ma, ma. Ma, ma, ma. Let me give you a word. This conference, and especially this night, Pastor Stanton, your ministry, your church, is going to celebrate. Woo, ha, ha, ha. I like that. I like that. Do that again. Glory. Again. Glory. Come on. We... All right. All right. Bless y'all tonight. Amen. We certainly thank God for a prophetess, Marcy Morrison. Amen. Just ushered in in this house and gave us a word people have been delivered and healed and been set free we just thank god for a ministry come on amen give her a hand i know she had to leave the building how she talked about we need each other and we work together amen we seen a powerful and move of god on here tonight amen sister coleman is coming and she's going to give us uh our breakdown Amen. Tomorrow is our last day. Can you believe it? It just seemed like we just started on Tuesday and Friday. Amen. Tomorrow is the last day. Well, this has been an awesome conference. Just go with your people. God, today. My God. Oh, my God. Woo, Jesus. Woo. Help me, Holy Ghost. Reset to accelerate is what we're doing in our general session. Somebody say reset. reset. And here we are on the last day of this awesome conference. If you've been blessed, would you just put your hands together? Thank God for the fresh manna from heaven. So tomorrow, our sessions for those of you who are registered will begin at 10 10 a.m once again with session number one entitled travail mm. my god the speaker for that session will be evangelist bessie and the moderator will be sister charlotte carmel our ceo would you put your hands together for sister charlotte none of this would be without her and we thank her session number two will be the wrap-up at 11.35, and the speakers will be our prophets, Prophet Donna Scott, Prophet Nina Turner, Prophet Chantel Binky, and the moderator again, our very own H-G-I-M-C-E-O for that session, amen. And then, of course, for um, our youth, or no, I'm sorry, this is for our first ladies, with session number one will be Uproot, and again, their session begins at 10, 10 a.m. All the first ladies know who they are, and that speaker will be Lady Grekshonda Jefferson, will be the speaker for that session. Amen, and then they're gonna have a popcorn prayer session. How many remember popcorn preaching? Anybody remember popcorn preaching? Well, this is popcorn prayer. I'm all about it. Hallelujah. And so here, this session will begin um, following the 1010 sessions. And this is going to be, again, Lady Jefferson, Evangelist Stacy Fields, Lady Aretha Patterson, and Evangelist Marceline Harris for the popcorn prayer. And again, for our bishops, um, they will have a full day session, which will be the round table taught by our very own um, apostle. So Larry J. Baylor, our presiding bishop. And then we have um, another session here um, called The Face Behind the Mask. And that will be taught by Lady Eliaka Thompson. Put your hands together for Lady Eliaka Thompson. Amen. And would you help me out one more time and just yell out, Faith. faith. Say it like you mean it. Faith. How many know our apostle has designated every Friday now for our HGIM conferences as Faith 
Friday. I believe something's going to happen. If you felt the power and the move of God on tonight, you ain't felt or seen nothing yet. And so I'm excited. Get excited. How many know the last day is always the best day? Amen. So that's going to be our climax service. Higher ground. How many know we're going higher? And so this is going to be the highest point. And again, we are so excited to bring in our speaker for tomorrow, Bishop John Francis, all the way from, I believe it's the UK. Amen. So again, how many know we have to do it big for God? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Faith Miracle Temple and Higher Ground International Ministries. All right. Sister Coleman, on the other hand, she's doing a marvelous job in facilitating and giving us our schedule each and every night for the next day. Also, along, she kept saying Friday is the best is the best part of the week, and also on the conference. Remember, tomorrow night, Amen, is what we call Faith Friday, Faith Night, Amen. So we come and we bring a special offering. And it's been designated bishops for a thousand, I think, uh, uh, JO 750 and pastors 500. And it just goes on down the list. Amen. But to remember tomorrow night, amen, is Faith Friday. And we come and bring some special gifts and things. Amen. We want to certainly take care of our budget. We've been doing very well. Come on, give yourself a hand. I, it's a sacrifice. I know it is. Amen. I've been giving. It's a sacrifice. But I know God is going to bring us through. Amen. We're going to accelerate beyond and over what we are trying to reach our goal. Is that all right? Let us all stand. Uh, we see the gardeners out there. Amen. I thought that was y'all. Amen. Let's say amen. Pastor for pastor and co-pastor gardeners amen they, they did a wonderful job amen on this afternoon amen talking about a virtual church amen they have an online church amen i tell you it was an awesome job that they did and they are part of higher ground amen they are part of higher ground for i guess what six months now maybe close to a year and you, uh, they got a remarkable story i wish i had time to tell it but I will tell this piece. How many remember we had the uh, tent revival uh, in Walnut Park? You know, in the park, that's where my church is, amen. They call it Murderville and all kinds of stuff. But we down there as a beacon and a light on that corner, amen. Well, amen, they was homeless. We didn't even know, but they was homeless, amen. And they, was, they came to the tent and they didn't know how they, what they was gonna do or whatever, and we heard about it, and uh, uh, we put them up in the hotel, got them furniture, got, got them all set up, and then all, of, and we didn't hear from them from that point on until last year. They gave Bishop Baylor a call and said, "Hey, y'all remember us? I mean, we're doing all right. We got children now. We're in a place in the home, and most of all, we got an online church, and we want to be a part of High Ground. Come on, give them a hand." Appreciate these young folk. See the work, not only work is, is happening, amen, in the Philippines and South Africa, but we're doing the work right here at home in St. Louis. Come on, give God. All right, all right, amen. Father God, we thank you tonight for this awesome service, this, this uh, third night of this conference, and we're just blessed to have these amazing speakers come, amen, and elevate us and, and push us and energize us, give us importation, the things that we need that we can take back to our churches and ministries, amen, to see our church ministries, amen, to move forward, amen, for the kingdom of God. I pray that the Holy Ghost will rest, rule, and abide for henceforth and forevermore in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. Amen. Be safe. Be careful. Practice your protocol.